please don't leave. At which church make I come go? We're praying to God for grace. We're praying to God for direction. There has to be a move of the spirit. And let the Bible speak for itself. No human can evolve a contrary gospel. I've read the Bible Genesis to Revelation 36 times. Say, now one hear this gossip. Ni hao in Chinese we say. People are confused about our ministry. I mean, <laughs> um, and like some fellow said, you know, uh, they are not bringing income. That's why they ask them to go. We ask you to go because you're unfruitful. Unfruitful, blatant failure. You know, doing what there? We have no patience with failure here. Amen. Now, when we employed 7,000 people at a time, social media was dead. dead. We have more employees in this organization than most of the states. No one is owed a dime salary. And we don't borrow, we don't beg, ask our bank whether we take over draft. We are covenant bond people. Walking in the light of God's war, enjoying an open heaven. We have fully delivered the first phase of 1,000 plus buildings. Gura churches. <laughs> None of those churches can generate that fund in the next 30 years. No. We are hunting after souls. Money, nonsense. Money. We've never lacked it, and yet we have never prayed for it. We are just simply obeying God, and He's backing up <laughs> what He's asking us to do. Awesome. Bro. Now the next set is about to be flagged off, just certifying the landed property issues. Nothing else. We have no lack of anything. The world is confused. Walking in the light of God's word. Please obey God. To the fool and watch out for his manifestations in your life. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Well, you don't need so much mathematics to know a thousand buildings that is not one thousand error each, that's not ten million each, that's not twelve million each, that's not fourteen million each, some are thirty-five million at a go. We have never seen it ourselves. We just watch God doing it. Only criteria. How many souls have they got in there? Then build for them. How many souls? Not once. How much money do they have? I said, come. come and give the Lord praise. <laughs> Apart from individuals now investing in promoting the kingdom of God, building five churches, some building two, some building three. Obedience will turn you to a living wonder. Just obey God. Have you ever seen us raise a prayer point or will God send us money? You have been here for some time. We pray every day. Now we pray three times a day. Covenant hour prayer. Covenant revival prayer. Morning and evening. <laughs> Going out every day on the streets. Well, you want to see what you see, go and do what you do. But if you are not saved, there is nothing you do that matters. Hello and welcome to the page. How are you doing? Hope you're doing good. Um, it's been a while right here on Being Real George and I know I have been talking a whole lot on things happening in government, politics and you people don't watch those videos but it's okay. I don't really care. I do what I want to do. So today is something about um, religion of course, Christianity as well which is something most of you know me for. Now listen, the video I'm about to share with you from this pastor, he did not call any names, alright? Okay? So whatever pictures you saw before you came into this video to watch it, I didn't even plan it or the pictures because uh, over time I've discussed all of these things and I'll be linking those videos I've discussed in the past in the comment, in the pinned comment if you're watching me on YouTube, okay? So the point is that um, I want you to take 
take your time because this is not like criticism or this is not like analysis i am not analyzing anything here that's why my computer is not here anytime you see my computer here is because i have a script i want to follow and make sure i'm you know giving you a logical conclusion to whatever it is i'm discussing so i want to listen to um this particular video i came across or a message i came across i think it's going to help you a whole lot understand number one what happens in most churches and why sometimes I come here and I say that some of you are numbers and not members of your church. The remnants who survived the exile are there in the province in great trouble and disgrace. We saw that they were the poorest of the land in great trouble, just like the church is often in great trouble today. Great trouble and disgrace. When the time comes and they ask and say, are you a pastor? You know, or people touts call themselves pastors just there's so much criminality it's shameful you feel embarrassed you say i'm a preacher and that's what i do immediately people are distrusting oh wow one of them or just the scandalous things you hear and he said oh it's a church person or do you hear what happened in this church or do you hear what happened in that church did you see, did you hear, are you aware, and this and that and all of that. It's constant. It's constant. In great trouble and disgrace. Every time you hear about what someone has done, what a pastor did to them, is his members. Or you just hear, the other day someone was telling stories. Just sad things, you know. Oppressive things. You see how... <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, I know it's not funny, you know, it's, it's sad, it's, it's disastrous, but you hear about a poor church, very poor, it's a denominational church, headquarters says, you must have at least 50 people, they come early in the morning, because inspectors are coming not up to 50 people if they come and they're not up to 50 they're going to post you pastor into a, a place you won't like very much so they are coming to number six are they up to 50 chairs is they up to this is they up to that so you buy chairs when they are not human beings sufficient to fill it up so you can convey that they are up to that number the people are poor struggling to eat but your tithe is not a certain amount. They call you to the carpet in front of all the other pastors and lambast you about why are you giving so little? Why is it so little? Okay, shut down. And they'll shut you down. And the little, I don't know if salary you get from there, you've lost it now. Change. People are giving offerings. It's change, 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 change. Because they are poor people. You see, I don't want to go down the path. Now, as we're just talking, I've heard scary stuff in my life, but sometimes when you're hearing it um, one on one, from, nearly from the horse's mouth, you know, it's the fall, the horse, the child of the horse. It's, telling, it's just so sad. Again, I don't know why I keep feeling sad about these things. Just, just horrific. While in the midst of it, there seems to be all this sincerity. You know what the preachers do many times? They're going to take their own money. They lie. They write out names that don't exist and say that this one gave this. Money they don't have. Poor people. Money they don't have. I know why there are not many rebuilders of Jerusalem. There are many poor people caring for vineyards and, and fields, but there are not many rebuilders of Jerusalem. Because for you to want to rebuild Jerusalem and leave your comfort, you must love the stones of Jerusalem. And if it's not there, it's not there. You know, sometimes I think about it and as I was hearing different people say, different denominations, you know, and I'm wondering. So someone's going to say, no, 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 the, the, the lead GO, the top person at the top, the found that the number one person at the top of that denomination, maybe the general superintendent or whatever they call them, whatever name they might go by, they are not aware. They are not aware that the sub 
or state leaders or the regional or whatever are doing this. You're not aware? If an outsider can be aware, that means your house, you don't know the state of your flock. The Bible commands you to know the state of your flock. So if that pastor can't come and say, please, sir, please, Oga pata pata, Oga at the top, over us 2,000 pastors, please. The people here are very poor. The money is very small that they bring. Ministry here for this past six months, one year. <laughs> Have you not heard of William Carey that went to India and for about whether 13 years, nobody gave their life to Christ? Nobody, nobody became a Christian. But eventually at some time, have we not heard of different nations and places where people went and labored and laid down their life and barely any results came out. But later on, there was a breakthrough and a fire cut the land. So what is it with targets for human souls? And many of the people that are in churches Many of them are not even saved. They just come. They've used one ploy or the other to get them to come and sit down. So that pastor looking at those people doesn't love them for them. It's not your soul I care about. Please, you're a target. Please don't leave, please. So when they come to inspect, they will not sack me or push me to the village, please. I don't care about your soul. I couldn't care less of what you do. All I care is that you don't leave. They need numbers to count. How is he meant to also love you? When he's shaking in his boots, terrified all the time. For those who don't understand the disgrace and the great trouble in Jerusalem, I have just told you about this is what is left in the land. This is what is left in the church. And this sister is talking about how her heart just breaks. How she just cries. How she just stays and says, what, what kind of dark oppressive spirit is this? How can that pastor have any joy? And another brother, another denomination completely, you know, talking about how the grandfather run around looking for money poor man in the village scraping the money together so you can put it and give and say this was the offering there wasn't any such offering they even come near but you have to or they'll call you to the carpet and lambast you and say what are you doing this is the church of christ this is the church of christ this is the state of Jerusalem when its walls are torn down and when its principal men are in captivity this is why when you're praying again understand someone is tells says this is why I will never be part of a church a so so and so church if I am this or that and that because I got to find out what happens with finances that's what happened I got to find out what happens with finances that that was the person's motivation probably almost in a church they had grown up in more or less or had been in for years then her responsibilities brought her in contact with what happens with the finances when she saw how the pastor struggles how you pack all the tent and naira how 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 he goes into an absolute tizzy when they say they are coming from from regional office Re people that are looking for food to if you that can't eat properly people who stay hungry whose children stay hungry and you're sending this money to where to multi-billion headquarters multi-billion where they should be pouring down money to you these are the things that unbelievers once in a while, I'm online and I come across a comment section, a news article, something that has to do with Christian, and you hear the responses. Now, I can't say what they say because the language is often foul. But you hear people say that this is why they don't understand all the idiots called Christians. This is the modest way. The idiots called Christians going to church. That they are absolute fools. That they don't know when the African man will stop being an absolute moron 
many have gone on to say Jesus is a quack. They abuse Jesus. They say it's fake. They don't, they don't believe there's a Jesus. Because their attitude is if these people represent Jesus, <laughs> it is far, far, far better. I had nothing to do with such a Jesus. They say it's direct. Who has read? Who has come across these things online? If you go and find out that some of them are pastor's children, that's when you start to understand. They hate the names they call people. They say church. <laughs> that it's an absolute sham, scam. Then it's not just that they walked away from it. They are so angry that anybody still believes any of it. Any of it. How? Great trouble and disgrace. We are in it. Many people don't know we are in great trouble and disgrace because they are in bondage. They were born in Babylon. They slave and labor under bondage. So they think bondage is the norm. No, now, there's nothing wrong. They'll just play this music, then all of us will bow. Yes, this girl statue. Yes, Nebuchadnezzar made it. He just said, when they just play, pam, pam, pam. Me, I've even added some words there. In between the pam, 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 I say hallelujah, pam, 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 hallelujah, pam, pam, hallelujah, 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 pam, pam. You know, so when they do like that, we just bow. We stand up. The other time, we had three people refuse to bow. Foolish people, I had they threw them inside pie. Or you think there were three Jews in Jerusalem, in Babylon? You think there were three Jews? You think there are three Jews? They took everybody there. Only three stood. Only three. Said we won't bow to this thing. So what happened to the rest? Don't ask me. I've been telling you forever. You call it prosperity. You call it all sorts of names. No, it's called idolatry. They are flat on their faces. Before a golden idol. Before gold. That's it. You must understand these things. These things are not empty words or a poverty spirit or lack of understanding. We speak from understanding. These things happen to them as examples for us. You would be wise to pay heed to these words. Not that you're repeating everything your forefathers did and you never understand that you're repeating it. You keep thinking it was different for them. It's the same thing. In the captivity of Babylonia, people compromise everything. Very few while there say, I know God has brought us here into captivity, but that doesn't mean you own my heart or my soul or my mind because you don't. I will not bow to this. When you determine never to bow to the enemy's lies, to compromise and yield, at some point you will face trouble in Babylon. It's normal. But you will also provide your name as a potential rebuilder of your own land. So I just want you to understand that it is captivity that makes people suffer so much and think it is normal and still be saying sorry, 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 sorry. It's captivity that makes you think that one person is entitled to 10 million every day and you're entitled to zero. In fact, minus. It's captivity that makes you think you can go and borrow money and come and give an offering. So before the offering, you were zero. After the offering, you are minus 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 or any amount and someone else before the offering was plus four million after the offering he's plus six million there's something wrong with your head that makes you think that the father of the both of you is okay with that there's something utterly diseased in your soul that makes you think he wants her to have I'm not, I'm just using rough examples. 500,000 Naira in her account and wants her to have minus 5,000 Naira in her account to bring her own up to 500 and 5,000. Something wrong with your head. 
And there's definitely something wrong with this person's head. To put your brethren into captivity like that. It's in the book of Nehemiah. Have you read it before? That they had put their brethren into captivity. And Nehemiah tore his clothes and slapped some of them. He beat them for it. That's the heart of a temple, a Jerusalem builder. We will get there where he tells you his entitlement as the Teshata of the land, the governor, and how he did not take his entitlement, how he bought no land. It's written there directly. I bought no land. I did nothing. And then you see her go and sell her tiny piece of land for half a million and give to her who has 50 pieces of land already backed up. What is, what, what's happening here? Then the same God is reached towards you all and you have the mind to keep taking it and not explaining that, no, that's not God's will. I've stood in church meetings and told people, don't be silly. Don't ever borrow money and come and give. God says you should give according to your ability. I've told you, for those who it didn't enter their head, I said, let me tell you something. If you take money from someone to give, maybe you say, give me offering that I don't have. I've told you very clearly that the reward goes to the person that gave you, not to you. It's, it's, not, it's not your money now. You he, how many of you have been in church? They said, if you don't have an offering, take from your neighbor. And you happily did it and feel like, thank God I have something to give. You don't understand. You don't understand. You gave nothing. The person that gave it to you gave it. You lost nothing. That's how I know. You not offer the Lord that which you cost you nothing. It cost you nothing. So you gave nothing. You didn't understand. This is different from you coming, going for a church, you're walking on the road, and then your friend, your brother or sister gives, oh yeah, take this 500. Do you understand? Dash. It's not for offering, he just gave you. Then you now took it and put it as an offering. That is from you. But that they said, everybody, make sure you're holding a seed in your hand. Oh, Jesus. How do you make any sense? Then you, th you think God is just desperate. Let me just see money. Let me see money in your hand. Okay, okay, I'll bless you now. If I didn't see money in your hand, I wouldn't have answered you. I wouldn't bless How crazy is that? How does it make sense that what God blesses people for is paper? That he saw the paper as he saw it like this. See? So, he's blessing people. Hold. He's blessing people. Okay? He's blessing people. He's, he's blessing people. Hold, hold. He's ble hold. Ah, no, no, no. Who is it? You're the poor sister. You have no money. But you're going to give her. God is blessing people. He wants to bless people. All right, I want to bless you all. I want to bless you. But for me to be blessed, I must see colored paper. I must see colored paper. If I can just see colored paper, I'll bless you. Anything? You want a blessing? Blessings. Ah. Blessings. Ah. Give half now. You need to give her. I'm about to pass. So you have no blessing. You have no blessing. You have no blessing. You have no. You have no Blessings. Aha. Blessings. You're all blessed. Small. You have gotten no blessing because there was no colored paper in your hand. This is going on in churches all over Nigeria. What craziness. So you wouldn't have blessed her if this person didn't put something in her hand. She would have left stranded. He would have said, don't you know to get you must give? How did, and almost all of you here used to believe it. What bondage. This is the trouble and the disgrace that rebuilders see.
when you come to the place where you see it and it troubles you it troubles you you feel so ashamed disgraced like oh god oh god maybe you're about to be qualified to rebuild jerusalem because other than that you won't be moved it doesn't bother you enough of all these people who needed the blessings the most the one without but that's the one that will get nothing because she has nothing next thing you're misquoting to him who has more be added to him who has not the context of that was people who were all given something did you not read did you not read in luke 19 that all they were given they were given they were given one mina each and then the one who buried what they had when they said to him who has nothing the little he has will be taken away he has nothing he added to what he was given have you heard this don't tell lies don't tell lies judgment is coming on liars it's the one who took the same amount this is not five two talents this is one mina each your bible may say one pound one mina each how many of you have heard that used as an excuse to demand that people give jerusalem is in trouble and there's disgrace it's terrible it's bad it is unfortunate but it's not enough to feel bad give me verse name my one let's continue when he heard it when I heard these words, read with me, I sat down and wept. I mourned for days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. People of God, are you with me? So when we say, come, let's fast, let's pray. Come, let's call on the name of the Lord. Come, let's beseech him. Let's appeal to God. Please, 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 come. He fasted and prayed for days this is the difference say no no me i love the body of christ and i've heard of all these things they are doing i don't even know <laughs> let's not judge what are you talking about something must happen change must come how sad what disgrace i feel so embarrassed when unbelievers start accusing us and we are actually guilty and then when you want to feel it more even more embarrassed watch when someone stands up and tries to defend the guilt the guilt that even 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 a little child knows you're guilty did it happen you defend it you look for a way and you call in god's name you have the mind to use god to defend greed wickedness error and all the terrible shame and trouble when it's disgraceful it's disgraceful you say it is disgraceful and say but god will help us god is able to help the church the church will stand again that's the truth that's what i believe i never believe the church will be defeated eventually but don't tell lies i hear people say you can never ever be you must always defend have you heard people give these policies what foolishness so you don't agree there's reason there's shame and disgrace and reason to mourn or you stand in front and say everything is perfect everything is perfect then how will you pray what will you mourn and fast for what for everything is fine after all are you going to be telling lies and want god to intervene no you tell the truth you agree that it is bad it's worthy of tears and you turn it the tears to god and when you do that, what God will do is he will show up and say, come, let me send you. You go and rebuild. That's why I positioned you before the king. With great fear, like Esther, he made an appeal to Artaxerxes and it was granted. Like we are making appeals to our God and it will be granted. Are you ready to be amongst those that rebuild? But you must have a heart. You must have a heart. Your heart has to break. You have to ask God to break your heart with what breaks his. I prayed that 20 something years ago. 
Jason Upton was singing one of his songs, Break My Heart With What Breaks Yours, he said. And I remember thinking, wow, what a risky thing to pray. But I prayed it. You don't fake such prayers. You don't pray it if you don't mean it. Because God is looking for people that feel what he feels, that are burdened with what burdens him. Not with their own vineyards, but his vineyard. My vineyard is the house of Israel, he said. Zephi, his vineyard. The Lord has a vineyard. You see, I am just surprised because, you know, I have been called Antichrist. A lot of people have come and cursed their family under my comment section or caused their generation under my, under my comment section and said a lot of things about me. But when I see people who are pastors saying the exact same thing but appealing to you in a way that i believe for me myself okay it's not someone who says george why are you explaining yourself now i'm not explaining myself i just have to talk to the new viewers because quite a number of new people are going to say this all right so uh, um, the, the point is that i'm just adding volume to this particular message that is preached by this pastor pastor ita udo i'm going to put you in the quiet <laughs> so um it's not because i'm from there or whatever uh, but it's just the fact that what he's saying is the truth what he said to a great extent there's a whole lot of truth in what he's saying it is practically if you are watching me and you are a pastor a junior pastor of a particular church i think some of the things he has said at the beginning part of the video itself makes sense to you it's relatable come on remember 40 pastors were sacked when and then many pastors reacted even okay let me not say what some other pastors reacted to it and saying that some of those past that, that those pastors themselves are cows and all that if you have to understand when it comes to christianity in nigeria to be precise there's a lot there's, there's a whole lot of mess look if you watch towards the end where he was talking about the whole defense mechani mechanism look at everything we have analyzed here about some of these men of god some of them are just the truth is glaring some people themselves accept that it's true but they now come and say okay george what is the benefit of this what good will it do leave man of god alone this am i the one that bring your man of god on social media they are the one putting themselves to disgrace people that are working with them are exposing them so just imagine you are going to a church and your pastor is using voodoo he's using magic and then someone that is an insider of that particular church comes out and say, oh no, no, this pastor is fake, this and this, I was doing this with him. Bring this out on social media and I take it and then I analyze and discuss it. How do I become the enemy of the church? What you should say is that you don't want your favorites to be discussed. But if there are issues ready on social media, trust me, I don't look back. Back to back analysis. Because I'm not the one that brings the things on social media. They bring it out themselves. People come out and talk and I discuss them. The point I'm trying to make right here is that many pastors who are motivated by their belly or whatever they are motivated have brought a whole lot of disgrace to Christianity. And I will not be that Christian that will sit down and watch this thing happen. Quote, if you like, quote, judge not, I will not be judged, comment. Quote it 100 billion times, 100 trillion times in the comments. I don't care. I'm saying this directly to the camera. I don't care. Because you pick and choose scriptures to read. When the Bible talks about judge, not by appearance, but judge righteous judgment. I don't even want to go further to discussing that. I made an entire video about that particular verse of scripture. Okay? So go 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 to my YouTube channel and watch it if you are watching on YouTube uh, on Facebook. So the point is that a lot is happening in the churches. And if people are not talking, if people are not showing them to you, you some of you that are numbers that are just targets for your pastors who don't understand these things. Yes, of course, there's a lot of error. Some of these people are into a lot of nonsense. When these things are being spoken about, it is now left for them to retrace back their steps, correct, you know, reconcile with God or something. I will not come here and say this one is a fake or whatever. You people should be the jury to know who is fake or who is real. You should know. I will not come here and then tell you what to believe or what not to believe. That is not my business. I analyze, present the facts to you. If you like, believe it. If you like, don't believe it. When their audio recordings come out, when their videotapes come out, when they are this, am I the one that go and bring it out from where they are? But when they come out, I add volume to them, discuss them and try to see, does this make sense? Does this make sense? 
If you don't learn today, you'll never learn. But I like the fact that you keep following me. Tag George the critic. I love it when you tag me like that. Just know that I love it. If that is only what will bring you back here to keep watching and learning. Or getting informed. Because if it doesn't make sense today, one day it will make sense. When he finally taught you. The person where we have discussed issue here with, uh, with uh, 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 Dr. Paul and H.A. The person that was working in his school and then things happened and then it came out online and people were discussing about it. That could have been such a person that will come here and defend anything that comes out about his papa. Some of you right now that might even be right now defending and saying uh, your generation this, don't talk about man of God, you will die. You will die first before me, I'm telling you. Because you don't know what I do, you don't know my agenda. Sometimes I make a video, a simple video and I'm questioning, okay, this, this, this. I don't even make a conclusive statement. But because this person is seen as people's favorite or well loved by people, you see how the troops will just come on. They cannot just sit down, face the fact, and say, okay, George, from what I think, you are wrong here, or this is it. But they will just come, you are cursing yourself and your family. Anon Pama. Yeah. 